Hi everyone. Well, I had thought I had nothing left to say about the market, but yeah, you know, after a, a day of rest and reflection, um, I'm feeling uh, that I can say a thing or two again. And so I wanted to make a little more content for my site uh, on this Sunday. And it, what I've done is I've gone through all my index charts and I've plucked out 15 that I just want to say a couple of things about. Uh, just to kind of give us a, a bird's eye view as to where I think things are and what I think the important um, price levels are. And we begin here with this All World Index, which I think does a really nice job of showing the pickle we're in. Um, because in the bear markets of the past, like this one and like this one, they pretty much just did their thing. And in this new world we're in, where no one can stand the idea of a bear market, um, there's a tremendous amount of counter push against that. So that's why this creature, the first portion in pink looks just like the others, but this is, a, this is new. This is not something you saw before. And if we look closely, we can see this face off going on because on the one hand, we've got this bearish top and on the other, uh, ever since, you know, late April, early May, uh, we've just been just grinding it out. And from, from a, if you really take a big step back, you can see this bullish pattern has been forming. And that's why it's been so maddening for me particularly because um, it seemed that we were in, in, uh, in line for a tremendous bear market, but we have spent the past nine months building this bullish base to counter that. And uh, the, the kind of line in the sand is this one right here, which is uh, just shared by both creatures uh, in terms of what's gonna win, who's gonna, who's gonna conquer who. Um, and you know, th this, is, uh, this is a big deal. <laughs> um, and this is gonna drive everything. Now, this is not the same pattern everywhere, but the, the, the theme is the same. Um, here's the Dow Jones Composite, for example. And it's the, the two prior bear markets that I highlighted in this instance are shown here and here. Um, but as we zoom in, it isn't quite as clean. And what I've drawn just now is this descending channel that's been kicking in. And we've been uh, spending some time below the midline, some time above the midline, but we're rather lofty now, about 75% uh, up with respect to this channel as a whole. Now, energy is of a special importance to me, and this, this does, I believe, show that we have damaged the trend line. I mean, it's quite clear that for the first time in the history of this trend line, we've actually sunk below it to some degree. Another thing I think which is of aid to the bears, and this is shared on many charts, is there's a goodly amount of overhead supply. Um, so the, the Thursday and Friday, especially Friday rally, was powerful, but it's got a lot above it to deal with. Uh, still on the topic of energy, we can see here the uh, Tatawal All Share Index. Um, this beautiful top that I've pointed out a number of times is still absolutely intact. And it's incredible to me because if you look at the midline, I just noticed this just this moment. Here's the midline of the channel. Is that, a, is that amazing? I mean, I've been trading for decades and I'm still dazzled by how these things work. That is just remarkable to me that it would tag that midline to the penny and then start rallying. But, you know, again, this is the easy part to push against. Now we're getting into this thicket of price activity, which will make it a lot harder to do that. Wow, that's a cool one. Um, the Nicey Amex is another glimmer of hope for the surviving bears out there in as much as this trend line is anchored to the uh, COVID crash low and it was indeed broken right here um, back in December. And we fell, we pushed higher, we tagged it and we fell and we pushed higher and we're still beneath it. So this is still quite plainly a broken trend line. Turning our attention to some of the better known indexes, here's the NASDAQ composite. Now, the first thing I want to point out is this trend line here before we zoom in. This goes all the way back to the bottom of the financial crisis. 
So that is a big, that, this is the biggest of the big. And as you can see, we got incredibly close to it late last year. And that's why, you know, things like Facebook have gone up 100% uh, just in a few weeks because they were so battered. Um, it's really pretty incredible. And this is a real mess. I mean, this is very hard to read because, uh, you know, on the bearish side of thing, on the bearish side of things, we still have a series of unbroken lower highs. No, don't, no, there's no denying that. Um, on the bullish side, the uh, lows really have stopped. Uh, we, we back here way back in June which is when my own portfolio peaked. Um, that was kind of as low as we got. You know, nominally, yes, we got a little lower, but not really. You know, we matched it pretty much here and pretty much here and pretty much here. It's kind of a quadruple bottom here. And then it's like, screw this and whoosh, up it went. So this is the most massive rally it's had ever since this one. So the, the real question is, will it beat the Groundhog Day high? And it, it comes down to that one simple question. If the bulls really want to run with this thing, uh, then they can do that. Then, then, then that opens up the prospect of, you know, getting back to the August 16 high. I mean, I think at that point they would be beyond done. Um, I would probably be teetering the Golden Gate Bridge at that point, but um, that would be, I mean, I don't think, I do not think the bulls have any chance of creating like some new bull market um, that's just going to go la da 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 and just keep sailing higher. Um, th this is a massive amount of overhead supply. Um, but the immediate challenge for them, I mean, the immediate, immediate challenge is to, to bust past this one, the uh, February 15th high, and then the, then the Feb 2 high. But this was a tremendous counter trend rally. And it seems hard to believe. It's really hard for me to believe. But it was only as recently as Thursday morning that we're the, we were the lowest we'd been in weeks and weeks. Uh, it didn't feel that way, but it was. Uh, the Dow, uh, here uh, we do have the same notion about all the overhead supply coming into play because it fell quickly and it reversed quickly, but then everything above this line, there's a lot more to contend with. NASDAQ 100, kind of the same point I was making as the composite, but I would also point out uh, this green trend line Check this out. Look at this perfect tag here, perfect tag here, and bang, 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 right on this major Fibonacci. So no surprise at all that tech stocks had, had uh, a tremendous base to bounce off of. That was, um, that was just a very, very appealing risk reward ratio for the bulls. But the same arguments I was just laying out apply to where we are on this one. Um, I'm trying to pick up the pace because I don't want this to go too long. I was kind of slow at the beginning. Um, again, bulls, you got to break this in order to uh, declare victory on the S&P 100. That line's still very much intact. Russell 2000, very range bound. We have been pretty persistently since April, just banging between these two Fibonacci's and we're kind of on the high side right now. S&P 500, also a mess. Um, and kind of the same face-off situation. I haven't highlighted them because they're not quite as clean, but here's the topping, uh, here's the top right here, and here's the bullish base right here. And regarding these two Fibonacci's, we are smack dab in the middle of them, which is why I'm so uncomfortable with the market right now and so weirdly disinterested and have so much cash on the sidelines. It's just such a, it's just a very like, well, I don't know, place to be. It's very unclear. I don't think either side has any particular advantage. We're right smack dab in the middle of that big fat mess. Uh, the bulls do have in their favor this. This is the transports and it's pretty plain to my eyes that we achieved a breakout uh, late in January and it successfully tested that breakout. Uh, utilities I think is in the bears favor and this has been slipping. And I think uh, as before, as with the Yindu, uh, this is gonna be tough to sustain this brief rally that it's had. And you know, we'll just close with the VIX because uh, we are back down into the 18s incredibly. Uh, we are very, very low on a long-term perspective. And I don't know if it's gonna take until this summer to kick in. I hope not, because this is kind of a drag. But uh, it seems to me that um, 
the bulls are at risk um, if that trend line on the VIX holds. All right, I'll close it there. Have a good week.